One of the things that I wanted to come back to was um, something you said about taking the ordinary and making it miraculous. And if you've read any of Emily Dickinson's poetry, that's essentially it. That she just takes these very ordinary things and makes them miraculous. So this was one of my favorite books, Emily. And not necessarily, I'll be honest, I didn't really care for the illustrations myself. I don't know how you guys feel about the illustrations, but just the I level, like the level of the language in here is so beautiful. And we're talking about a poet and and the words and sentences are often poetic. I mean, it's just, they it's are. that, again, we, we talked about it in the last episode. It's the next level of literature. We're, we're giving them good sentences and good words while still dealing with interesting topics and themes. I mean, here you have a, re, a recluse. It's an Emily right. B, and I didn't know that. I mean, I should have known that, but I didn't. I agree with you. I think the prose in this is just beautiful. And just the effect of a child on That's an adult right. that... She didn't go out in public, but she reacted to a child's innocence. So this brings up the theme of an artistic genius who, I mean, she's immortal. Mm -hmm. But to the world, she was crazy, totally reclusive, separated herself totally from the world. But... She was, I mean, she's, her words will live forever. So, you know, there's something in that too, that you can be different. Everybody's different. This brings me again to the door in the wall mm -hmm. where, you know, everybody has a different purpose. Everybody has different abilities and something that you feel like could be your weakness could be be the thing that maybe she couldn't have written all this great poetry if she hadn't had this kind of life. It's so good to have you with us on this episode of Novel Thoughts. It was a lot of fun putting this episode together for you, and we hope it helps you on your literary journey. If you do enjoy our show, we'd love for you to let us know by liking and commenting down below. And if you like Memoria Press and the things we're doing here, join us by subscribing by hitting that button right there. Thanks so much, and let's get back to the episode. So there are two places that she she talks about poetry and even just practically speaking. And by she, I actually mean he, the author, Michael, because he, he uses two of the characters to talk about it. Um, but this is a great way to introduce something like poetry because it is complex. People don't know how to really deal with it. But the little girl, the main little girl in the story, asked her father, what is poetry? I asked. And he said... Listen to Mother play. She practices and practices a piece. And sometimes a magic happens, and it seems the music starts to breathe. It sends a shiver through you. You can't explain it, really. It's a mystery. Well, when words do that, we call it poetry. I love that. I, I just love think that, that is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's, it, it's reminiscent of the muses, right? Yes. I mean, just, you know, that just, you know, that something miraculous happens. Right. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, the spirit is animated, right? That's in right. music and in song and in art. And I think anybody who does anything creative, you can just feel that energy, right? Yes, when that's right. something There's, happens, right? There is an inspiration right, that right. you can feel. Right. In the second instance, it's when the little girl is before Emily and Emily's writing. And, you know, if you haven't yet caught on, this is Emily Dickinson. You will by the by by the end. Finally, right. But in this case, the little girl is asking, is that poetry? And Emily says, no, you are poetry. This only tries to be. And it's just this beautiful picture of that you as a person is really the height of that. God's creative act in you as a person is a kind of poetry that we only can mimic in in, in what we say and do. So what did she write to the little girl? I Let's thought see. that was beautiful too. So here at the end, we have her little poem. Who has not found the heaven below will fell of it above. For angels rent the house next hours wherever we remove. Lovingly, yeah, I, I, mean, I thought that Emily. was great. I think that's what she wrote to the little girl. I think you're right. Who has not found heaven below will fail of it above. Yeah. I just thought, I just think that's beautiful. 
I love that book. But it did. I don't. It's a biography, but it's also. It's a story. It's a, it's a story about poetry mm-hmm. and the importance of it and how beautiful it is and can be and life changing. So we have other Emily Dickinson poems in our curriculum. I never saw more. I never saw the sea. But then the last it's a last stanza that's so that's so wonderful. I never looked at God or visited in heaven. Yet certain am I of the spot as if a chart were given. I mean, Emily Dickinson is just it's amazing. I hope I recited that correctly, but it's close. The meaning is there. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But we have other even books of poetry in the read alouds. We do a visit to William Blake's Inn, which is a lot of um, honestly some nonsense verse, which is fun. It's weird. Based on the William Blake style. That's right. right. They're not Blake poems. They're not Blake poems. Now, one of the interesting things about it and something I think we should mention is that it gives you a lot of different poetic styles. You've got a lot of different um, verse patterns and things like that. But we've also got Paul Revere's Ride, which is a Longfellow poem. And so it's a great way to introduce actual um, historic poetry. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. And I'm just going to go to it right Let's now. Let's do okay? it. Let's do it. Since you brought it up, because I love it. And this, our sixth graders memorize it. And so this then in second grade, they will remember in sixth That's grade right. that this was read to them every day. And the for illustrations a week. are so powerful. The illustrations and vivid. are really good. And it really just brings the whole thing alive. And it's just the, you know, it's the whole story for them in poetic form. And they're really like, if you just read this poem to a second grader without these pictures, it wouldn't be nearly the same as it is when they can look at the pictures and see the action. And then when they get to sixth grade, they no longer really need the pictures. We should get, we should do this though. We should put this in the sixth grade. It would be great. To, as a picture book, the first time they introduce it to read it. Oh, right. Absolutely. We're just full of ideas. That's right. (laughs) Well, it's so important. I mean, it's the poetry that lives in your heart. I mean, I remember, you know, listen, my children, and you shall hear from when I was a grammar school child. I mean, you remember certain words in your your heart that just live there. But, you know, poetry is so important and scripture. um, And it's important just, you know, to develop yourself um, as a reader, but um, and just to have beautiful words in your heart, but also because Poetry is one of those things that really is a stepping stone to more elevated literature. I mean, it's a, you know, we talk about these books being concise and an opportunity to talk about really important themes in a short, you know, condensed story. But poetry does the same thing with language in a very, in a very short, concise way. um, It it really is a stepping stone to more mature language and comfort with, um, you know, articulate uh, words and advanced vocabulary and, and more abstract, conceptual, that's right, meanings. Um, and so, you know, poetry is really important in terms of getting the child to Shakespeare or to Dante or, you know, even even to difficult prose. Um, it, it's a really, really important tool because it's a it's a concise way to tackle language and be uncomfortable with it, really. That's right. Um, it forces you to pause right. and be contemplative. We've talked about that before. Right. You can't approach it and expect, that's right. You can't expect to just read a line. Now, some of them you can. With Paul Revere's Ride, you can read a line and get it. But there are other poems, even an Emily Dickinson poem, where you have to sit there. Right. You have to sit there with the line and make sure you've understood the grammar, the context, right. the language, right. the semantics. And it's and it's and it is that discomfort. I mean, so many people just say, "Oh, I don't understand this. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable." Um, but we know from living that it's the discomfort that's that, right. where we find growth, right? And so, you know, in everything that we do, it, it, that's that's where the growth happens. I mean, when we lift a heavier weight, the discomfort is where their muscles grow, and that's what's happening in the poetry. The discomfort is the very thing that's going to grow us in terms of our comfort with more elevated language. And so so we have to appreciate that and accept it and be wide out about the situation there. Well, and one of the things I think that poetry does, especially for something like Paul Revere's Ride, and you mentioned it at the beginning, but I want to circle back to it, is that it takes an historical story, an action, an event, and makes it memorable. Because yes. similarly, when I hear the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere, I hear that in, in a tone. I hear that in a rhythm. That's right. And... So this is one of our ways of introducing one of the more significant events in our history. But we do have some other history here that we talk about, the 4th of July story. Which this one is a really good introduction to to American history. Um, And we do it, I think we do this one at the very end of the year. 
because we're not in school on the 4th of July, but it really is about the, the American Revolution. And it's really, it's kind of broken down into chapters, which is right. really good for this age to be, you know, to start really listening to chapter books being read, but they're very short chapters. But it's a nice little summary. The pictures are good. Um, and it's a nice little summary on a second grade level about um, the Declaration of Independence and where, you know, where where our country came from and what it took to get there. And it's got, you know, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. So it reminds um, me, too, of um, the fair in Farmer Boy, you know, so it's just another oh, yes. opportunity. It's a celebration. Um, it's a celebration. Right. Yes. I mean, yes. it's, it, it's a community event. And yes. so it kind of is reminiscent of that scene in Farmer Boy. Well, yes. I really liked it. As I was reading it, I read the little introduction and, and Alice, the author, makes clear, like, not all of these happen, these events happen on the 4th of July. Once you actually understand and look through history, some of some of the events that she includes are, you know, around the 4th of July, happen weeks later, something like that. But the right. whole point, the whole point is that it's teaching students the main idea between, and behind the 4th, the 4th of, July. of July. It's leading us to the 4th of July. Right. And it's telling students, this is what you need to have conceptually when you think of the 4th of July. So I like what you said, that it's an appropriate introduction to the 4th of July for a second grader. And it's doing history well by treating it as a narrative, by treating all of the things that we ought to think about as the 4th of July, even if they happened on July 2nd. And it's giving, us the, it's giving us the characters of our founding fathers. You know, like when there's um, a disorderly, disrespectful celebration and George, George Washington, Washington disapproves right. of yeah, that, right. which sets us up to know a little bit about his character. That's right. So that when they study him in an actual American history survey, they already know something about who he is. That's right. And what kind of person he is. Well, I think that's exactly why, you know, you have most young students are introduced to George Washington and, and they hear the story about the cherry tree, you know. Right. Regardless of any maybe historicity of those events, you're getting the character of these people. You're you feel getting, like he's a man of integrity that's right. before you know anything else about him. That's right. <laughs> 